five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the Minot State Professional Communications Department proudly brings to you the Stria Sports Podcast with your host, Parker Stria. Hello and welcome back to the Stria Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Parker Stria, and on today's episode, I'm going to be talking to a brand new member of the Minot community. I'm by no means professional, but I do love talking about sports, so thank you for joining me. This man has more than 20 years of coaching experience. He has spent time as the head coach at Eastern Oregon University, Lenore Rhine, and Jacksonville University. He has been the offensive coordinator at Army, California Polytechnic State University, Bucknell University, and St. Mary's College of California. He spent his last three years as an assistant, analyst, and top advisor to the head coach at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. He was also recently announced as the 22nd head football coach in Minot State University history. He is the one, the only, Mr. Ian Shields. Thank you for joining me. How are you Uh, doing today? Doing great. Excited to be here and uh, talk a little bit about Beaver football here. Thank you. Thank you for joining me. So I just got a couple quick get-to-know-you questions, just easy Nothing too serious. So number one, I just got, what's your favorite type of pizza? Oh, that's a good question. So since I've been in Minot, I've had pizza at a few different places in the last month because I've been here about a month now. And I'll have to say the bowling alley pizza here is pretty outstanding, underrated. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went with the combination. I'm big on combinations, but no mushrooms. Okay. And what is your favorite NFL team? Okay, so the favorite NFL team has been since – I'm going to date myself here a little bit, but since about 1977, the Oakland Raiders, right, which is now the Las Vegas Raiders, obviously. So always been a Raider fan, grew up, you know, when the era when they used to be really good, and they haven't been good for a while now. Now Hopefully they'll be getting Rodgers from my favorite team. You guys will be winning a Super Bowl this year. Uh, Uh, If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Hmm, superpower, that's that's an interesting one. Um, Maybe foresee the future. Yeah, maybe foresee the future. That, and uh, I don't know. Maybe that takes some mystery out of it too. So, I don't know. I, I guess uh, you, know, you can never be too fast. Maybe some speed. I'd like some like some turbo speed would be great. You know, give me some Superman stuff. Two very great options. This one is kind of a highly contested one. Are you Team LeBron James or Team Michael Jordan? <laughs> so this, I I get in this argument with my sons because they're like in your age demographic, right? So the new group never saw Mike at his at his peak mm-hmm. um i think oh i think it's a double i think there's i'm a michael jordan guy i'll say i'll say you know michael jordan to me is the best ever but i will say this lebron's made a a, a real case for himself because the longevity of mm-hmm. what he's done all-time leading scorer um there's a strong case for LeBron um, as he c- continues to build his legacy. He's done it longer than Michael has. Yeah. I think Michael at his peak was the best. Um, but you could even go back further and, and, you know, Bill Russell has a pretty strong case. He won 11 yeah. NBA championships. Mm-hmm. Michael and and uh, just nobody saw it. Be, you know, no one alive saw it unless you're, you know, over 70 years old. So, yeah. um, But he was, he was as dominant as there ever was. And Kareem was dominant forever. Mm-hmm. And so there's been a lot of greats, I think. At the top of Goat Mountain, I think they're all about even. They're all special in their own way. Mm-hmm. And lastly, are you a glass half empty or a glass half full type of guy? Oh, it's all full. It's all full. It's not even past half full. It might be tipping over <laughs> full. We're, you know, like I said, that's the only way to look at it. We're, we're uh, I choose to live, choose to coach, uh, to be relentlessly positive. You know, it's, it's always easy to find a negative and make excuses and complain. Um, that's some of the rules that we go by. We're no whining, no complaining, no excuses. No, nobody cares. Mm-hmm. Just find a way to get done. Love to hear it. So jumping into the, the bulk of this, uh, so how have you been enjoying Minot so far? And you're about a month or just over a month in being here. Yeah, it's been great. I'm excited. I really have enjoyed getting to know the guys on the team. That's the, the first things first is, I mean, it's been straight work since we got here. I, I was signed three, three days before signing date, so we've been – you know, uh, like I say, juggling flaming chainsaws or drinking out of a fire hose. Like, we've been going nonstop as a staff, getting my staff here. Uh, but we've loved it. We, we love the campus community, uh, the community at large. 
uh, certainly on the players of the team have been a real bright spot for me to get to know them personally and uh, you know move this program forward. That's the goal. Nice. Uh, what led you to Minot State? Kind of talk me through how that came to fruition after, of course, Minot State's last head coach contract wasn't renewed, and then just a couple months later, you're announced as the 22nd head coach. Yeah, well, that's the nature of the business. There's, there's, it's a pretty volatile industry, you know, and if you get in this business, so you're going to be on the move typically probably a little more than you even like, either one way or the other. So I um, was fortunate, you know, I've been a head coach at three different universities. I, I've been a coordinator at a bunch as well, as you mentioned earlier, Parker, and it was just an opportunity for me to be a head coach again. I had the, the itch to scratch and I want an opportunity, and I saw this as a really unique opportunity where they haven't been good here. I mean, we've never had a winning season in Division II football since we made that jump from NAI to D2. Uh, so it's a chance for us to make history here. I see a lot of reasons we should win and can win here. Mm -hmm. We've got a city of 50,000 people. We've got an international airport here. We've got a great education at, at an affordable price. We've got a bubble where we can practice. We got There's a lot of positives here. Um, where we can attract quality student athletes here and put together a plan and, and do things uniquely, do them our way, um, but make a run in this conference here soon. Yeah, so did Minot State reach out to you about the position or did you see that they had a vacant spot and you kind of reached out to them? A little bit of both. I mean, that's kind of how it works in this industry. You always know somebody somewhere and, and have a connection somewhere. Uh, and it's hard to typically in this industry to get a job just cold, you know, mm -hmm. so. Um, was fortunate we made that connection. Um, Kevin Forty, our athletic director, reached out to me, and um, you know, got in the interview process, and you know, it led us to this to where we're at today. So, I was fortunate. I was impressed when I came on campus initially in the interview process with our administration here. Uh, Dr. Shelley was outstanding. Everyone I met. So, um, I see a lot of reasons to, for optimism here uh, with the leadership here on campus, and then. Uh, the quality young men uh, that we can recruit here and uh, we're having a lot of success right now as we speak in the recruiting process with guys we had 10 recruits on campus this weekend cool. so we're working hard we've um and we're, we're putting in overtime and then you know we start a spring practice in 15 days so mm -hmm. you know there's a lot going on right now yeah so like we both mentioned, this is your fourth stop as a college football head coach. Uh, how do you plan on using experiences that you gained from those three other universities here at Minot State? Yeah, I mean, there's no substitute for experience. I mean, that's an advantage I have having been in this. Uh, you know, next, next season will be my 30th year coaching college football. So I've been doing this a while. And so hopefully you learn some lessons along the way. I've, I think I've done some things well along the way, and I think there's some things I'd like to have done better along the way. Mm -hmm. And you learn from all of it. You learn from your successes. You learn from your failures if you're paying attention. Yeah. And uh, you're always working to keep the arrow pointed up. I mean, you're either you're getting better or you're getting worse. You know, you're growing or you're dying. You're, you're learning and you're living. And that, that's, what, that's what we do, you know. So I'm excited, excited to, you know, to, to capture this team, to motivate this team, to infuse this team. And um, like I said, I've, I've hired a great staff. That's the most important thing I probably learned along the way is uh, have a real loving wife that really loves you and to hire a great staff. And then maybe a, do a real loyal dog. I'm not sure in what order. Oh, they all go hand in hand, <laughs> of course. I know you mentioned just mentioned on your staff, and I was actually just going to ask that anyways. Uh, you've slowly been building your coaching staff for the upcoming season. Um, this is something I personally just kind of wanted to know. How exactly does something like that work? Do you seek out these candidates? Like, I think this person would be great. Or do they see, okay, this university, kind of like similar to the head coaching question I asked earlier. Yeah. Do they seek you out or do you seek them out? Well, there's a little bit of both of that. Now, typically in this profession, you're hiring guys that you have a background with and you've worked for, and we've done that in a few cases here. So Mike Bruno is our defensive coordinator. Uh, Coach Bruno and I worked together a year ago at UNLV. Uh, so there's some history there. I know the guy. I've seen his work in person. Uh, obviously, it's a really strong resume. Uh, having been at you know I think three different uh, FBS schools, all right? So he's he's a talented young coach. It's a chance for him to coordinate. So I'm, you know he's doing a great job already. Um, then I hired Tom Seamy as our assistant head coach. Coach Seamy is our offensive line coach. Um, we go back, the first time we worked together was in 1997, okay? So well, he was at my wedding. So the, we're pretty got, tight. Got history. Yeah, we got a little bit of hit. We've broken some huddles together. So, like, uh, and he's outstanding. And, and I, our offensive lineman will love him, and he's going he's gonna to get that room right. And uh, we're going to be tough and play hard and, 
and uh, have a little edge to us, which will be which will be nice. But Tom and I have history. You know, Anthony Garnett in the secondary. You know, Anthony's been a few, a few different places at the collegiate level. Um, he was at Arizona State. Uh, he, but he played for me uh, as a quarterback at Cal Poly uh, years ago. He was a great quarterback, actually. We probably would have won the national championship in 2005 at Cal Poly if, if he didn't have an ACL injury about you know halfway through that season. We still went to the second or third round of the playoffs oh, that wow. year. We beat North Dakota State that year 37-6. to <laughs> All right. I mean, we beat them like rented mules, I'm telling yeah. you. But and Anthony was our quarterback. Uh, and then when he got hurt, though, that, that took a little chunk out of us and because uh, he was our starting quarterback. He's a great player. So, we're you know, even though, like our defensive graduate, graduate assistant, Jeremiah Johnson, Jeremiah played for me at Jacksonville University. So there's all these strands and these connections on the staff. And then I've been fortunate. I retained uh, Coach Fam, Mike Famigletti, uh, on the previous staff. who's only been here a year, um, but he's been a real asset in the uh, – in this turnover, basically, of you know, keeping some consistency, helping the recruiting, knowing where things are on campus, and Dan- Daniel DeYoung as well, coaching the tight end. So, mm-hmm. um, it, I really like how the staff's coming together. We're not quite all the way there yet. I, I got a couple more pieces to fill, um, but we're almost we're almost home there. Perfect. Okay, so fans and people around the area that are not familiar with you, what can they expect from you as not only a coach but just as a person as well? Well, boy, you know, you get a personal. I, you know, I have some real foundations in my life, my faith, my family, and the game of football. I, mean, I don't have many hobbies. I'm not a great golfer. I'm, I'm okay, like, in a scramble situation. But um, that, that, those are my priorities, my faith, my family, and football. That's it. Um, it's not complicated. If, I, if I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing one of those, <laughs> you know. And so um, I think when they see our team play, I think, you know, we'll identify with – I think our fans will identify with how hard we play. And we're going to play with tremendous effort. I tell people that, like, if aliens were beamed down out of space to watch us play football, they'd be saying, I don't know what they're doing, but they're, they're having a great time and they're going hard. Uh, I hope that's what we look like. And then uh, if, we, if we play the game the right way, if we play the right fundamentals, right technique, um, you know, don't beat ourselves. We like to say eliminate sin, the self-inflicted negatives. Mm-hmm. If we just, you know, don't lose the game, eventually you can win the game. Exactly. You know, so that's what we have to get better at here. And, uh, you know, obviously we always got to improve the current roster, too. we got to keep recruiting and get our talent level so we're competitive at the highest levels of this conference. And we're working towards that. And, and we have good players here, too. We have some good players here. Mm-hmm. I think people would be surprised. Like, we have some good players here. We just got to get them all pointed in the right direction and get this program in total alignment, offensively, defensively, kicking game, culturally. And, like I said, it, it's a jigsaw puzzle. When you're the head coach, that's what you're doing. You're, yeah. you're putting a jigsaw puzzle mm-hmm. together. You're getting in the car, and it's you're, you know it's like Google Maps, and you you got to get the destination right, so everyone's not just falling off cliffs, cliffs or into ditches. That's that's what we're trying to get done. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so Minot State's uh, fourth. We're just going to get into a little bit of actual football now. Sure. Minot State's fourth leading rusher of all time, Ali Muhammad, transferred to Bemidji State this past off season, which now leaves you and the team with a very inexperienced uh, running back room. How do you plan to create a consistent running game with a backfield with little to no starting experience? Yeah, well, you know, I'm not going to worry about who's not here. I could care less. I worry, I worry about the guys that are here, and I think we have some talent here. Um, we, we have, you know, Evan Love is a good player. You know, he, he was he performed well last year. You could argue he was the most productive running back. Eric Palmquist is a good running back and receiver. He can do every. He's a Swiss Army knife. He can do a lot of things. So. Um, we got other guys in the program as well that are working hard and ready for their opportunities. So I think uh, some of those guys just need opportunities. They need a chance to get on the field and develop and play within a system that suits their skill set. And I'm excited to see what that room can do. I mean, obviously, I haven't had a chance to have our hands and actually coach him yet until we get out here to spring practice and see him actually play football instead of just running around, you know, in the in the bubble or doing the drills with our strength and conditioning coaches or in the weight room. Um, we can see what they've done a year ago to a certain extent mm-hmm. um, and lean on our, um, our, re- our retained coaches for information. Uh, but we're going to find out here shortly what, what they're all about and how we can, like I said, give us the best chance for success in the games of ours. Nice. Okay, so kind of keeping the tone with the running game, uh, during your three years at Jacksonville University, your team consistently ran for over 2,500 yards a season, including over 3,100 in 2017 and almost 3,700 in 2018. 
Your quarterback in 2018, Calvin Turner Jr., himself ran for 1,400 yards and 17 scores. Do you plan on trying to implement more design quarterback runs for a team that for this team in the future? Well, we're we're going to be a spread option offense, so just by design, that's what that's what will happen. How that's exactly shaped and the carries are divvied up are going to be depend on the personnel that we have. So. Um, Calvin Turner Jr. is not here at Minot State right now. Like Calvin Turner Jr. is a first-round draft choice in the XFL and had tryouts with the Ravens and the Raiders and the 49ers. And you know, when they dropped the program at Jacksonville, he went to Hawaii and was all Mountain West Conference and was pretty special. So, like we don't have that type of dynamic athlete at quarterback. So that's why those stats look like that. Now Calvin didn't throw very well. That was his downfall. But he was a true option quarterback. Uh, so we're looking for a real dual threat quarterback. And so. Uh, it could be one of the guys we have here now, and you know, we're going to find out what they're capable of doing this spring. Um, but that's, a, I mean, there's going to be a fight at the bat rack for to see who to, who's, who gets the at bats when this season gets started because we're going to have some guys coming in here too that will make it very competitive. Yeah, do you, I mean, Minot State has predominantly been a run first team as of late. Do you kind of see that? Um, I say that is that the identity you see this team kind of keeping or like you said you kind of more of that option or is you gonna are you gonna try to turn it into more of we're gonna try to be a pass first and lean on the run game when needed no i think we're gonna be a run-based program you know, that's 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 always been my identity as a coach and i think that's it's not just about the offense that's what suits the team the best that's what suits our defense the best they i wouldn't say they were a great running team here or or passing frankly a year ago they scored about 12 points a game they didn't do anything that well so we got to turn the page completely i don't like i said i don't care anything that happened in the past it makes zero difference here um all the previous teams have no bearing on what's going to happen going forward whether they were good in the 70s or the 40s or Mm -hmm. or uh, not so good here recently like it, it the history makes no difference what does make a difference is the guys in our locker room now and the guys we're going to bring into the locker room and our coaches that's what makes the difference. And then our administration here and our support we get from our fans and our student body, what happens now is what's important. I, I, the past is irrelevant. And I know shortly after you got to Minot, you actually went and met and made yourself known to local high schools, including Bishop Ryan, Minot High, and my alma mater, Velva. Uh, can you tell me a little bit what those trips were like and how important you think trips like that are for things like recruiting? Well, I, I think it's critical to the recruiting process to to get out there myself as the head coach, but our staff as well here in the state of North Dakota, uh, right in our backyard. We need to work at it and, and have Minot State known and have that be an option. Um, I, I didn't know until I got to those schools you mentioned, to you know, Minot, Bishop, Ryan, and Velva, that each of, the, each of the head coaches are Minot State alums. Mm-hmm. Like, I had no idea until I got there, and they said, Coach, it's great to see you. Everyone is so friendly here in North Dakota. But, you know, um, very well received. They were happy to see us. Um, you know, like I said, I want that to be an option for guys to stay home and uh, play in their backyard so their families can you know, not have to travel so far and, and, and watch them play. And we're going to be playing football at a high level here. And there might be some guys that choose to go on and go to, you know, say UND or NDSU or wherever – across the country but if it doesn't work out and then I mean, it's a pretty volatile industry on that side of it too and then uh, the transfer portal's open and you never know the guys we might get that say hey you know uh, those guys at Minot State are good guys they're doing a nice job they, we like the staff over there and we get guys on the rebound uh, that's how that's how it can work and and may work um, you know we just got to keep we just got to keep doing the right things right. I mean, if you do the right things right consistently day after day after day after day, then the football guys are paying attention and they're going to reward you. Yeah, and I will absolutely always be vouching for the Velvo players. That's just my bias kind of sneaking in. But So how important is it for your players to not only focus on the game and the team, but are you actually going to, like, in, how, how, I said, how important is it that they also make sure they're focusing on their academics and classroom work as well as football? Yeah, you know, so we, it's super important, but everything's important. Like, I tell our team, we have this this corny acronym, W-A-D-L, Waddle. And what Waddle means is, is that's just our philosophy, is you win all day long. You don't just work, work, win on Saturdays when the scoreboard's on. You win consistently from the second your head gets up off the pillow to the second you put your head down on the pillow 
I want guys that are consistently keeping score. I want competitors. I want guys that want to win in the history class or philosophy class or their calm class. Or, and I want guys that are winning and making the right decisions at lunch. I want guys that are winning in their community service. I want guys that are winning at practice. I want guys that are winning in the weight room. I want guys winning their condition. I want guys winning their flexibility. They're taking a yoga class. I want guys winning when they're making the right decisions what to eat for dinner. I want guys winning in their relationships with their family and friends or girlfriends or whatever it is. Like, I want guys that are winners because ha- habits are habits, and winning habits lead to winning, mm-hmm. and the scoreboard gets right. And if you have losing habits, then that, those are habits too, and that, loses, that leads yourself to losing. Mm-hmm. So it's a simple process. It's just consistently doing the right things right over and over and over and over and over, and then the scoreboard takes care of itself. So I want guys that are going to win everywhere, and our team GPPA will be strong. So Minot State, I mean, I think we kind of touched on it earlier, unfortunately hasn't had a winning record since 2010. How do you, as a new head coach, uh, approach a team and also a community that has been on the losing side of so many games over the last decade and couple years? Yeah, so this this next year, this next team has never played or coached in any of those games. So it's a blank slate. Like, who cares, honestly? Like, we get, like we're gonna like like you already asked. So we're gonna keep the glass half full. Uh, we got guys. We have guys that are competitors. We have talent here. We have a coaching staff that has a plan, and uh, we're gonna go compete. And we're gonna go give it a great effort. We're gonna do the things that win football games. And if we do that well enough, then the scoreboard takes care of itself. But it is a process. Of building a program is a process, and we might not go undefeated and win the national championship next year. I, we get that, but we are gonna be a better football team, and we are not gonna have. Um, we're not going to put limits on ourselves or, or negative expectations upon us. Like we're going to go compete every game, and we're going to try and go one and zero every week, and that's the goal. And I know we kind of touched, or you especially kind of touched on spring ball a little bit earlier, and it, like you said, does start in just a couple of weeks. I believe it's what, you said, fifteen days from today. Fifteen days, uh, Tuesday the twenty-first. How important is spring ball going to be for you and your staff to get a look at this talent on the roster that you guys? Other than Coach DeYoung and Coach Pham, they you guys haven't coached any of these players, so how important is spring ball going to be? Oh, it's critical. It's critical for us just to get some foundations of the program and some uh, philosophical stuff. How we just how we do business on the field, you know. I mean, we we've, we've started heading that direction, like how we're doing business in the weight room and the off season conditioning program and our fourth quarter program. But to actually get out there and do football and line them up and to see how they move and throw and block and catch and all the fundamentals of football, how they can transition to our system, our coaching style, in all three phases. You no know, one talks about the kicking game either, but that's and we got we got to figure that out too. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot. It's it's going to be a journey of discovery here, and, and uh, we're going to learn a lot about each other. We're going to learn a lot about these kids. Um, but I said it's going to be it, it'll be. It's going to be great. Like, we need to do it, and it's going to be fun. I know our guys are excited to get the helmet and shoulder pads mm-hmm. back on and, and actually do some football. Okay. Do you, as the head coach, have any goals for the upcoming fall season, whether that's individual goals for you yourself or just kind of as the team as a whole? Well, we have team goals, you know, and, and you know, the, the first one is to play with perfect effort. We don't say good effort or great effort. We say we play with perfect effort. So we have to learn how to start doing that, to play, you know, the average college football play lasts six seconds. So we've got to learn how to play all six seconds all the time, you know, from A to B as fast as we can. And that's a, that's a, that's a habit as well. So we've got to learn how to play harder. Um, and then, you know, aside from that, then after effort, then I want us to have a team GPA over 3.0. That's one of our team goals. Uh, we're, we're pretty close to that right now, actually. So we'll see how this semester goes. We're making some strides that way. Uh, and then the next one is have a winning season. That's never been done here. Like, I don't believe, I don't believe since it's been Division Two here at Minot State, there's been a, a pro team that's won four games here. So... But the goal is, you know, right now the goal is winning season. And to put it into, like, FBS terms, to be bowl eligible. Mm-hmm. You know, let's see. If we, let's go win six games. And if we win six games, that's a heck of an accomplishment because it's never been done here before. And I think for all of our players and our staff, that's a realistic goal uh, at some point here in the near future that we can, we can obtain if we're doing things the right way and playing the right way and playing with great effort and doing all the little things. Uh, and then we got to coach and get some talent in, you know, some more talent to add to this roster as well. And, and we're in that process. So I think that's a, that's a 
that's the big, you know, hairy, ambitious goal that's out there right now is let's go do something that everyone says can't be done here. That, that's one of the reasons that, that attracted me to this position, frankly. Chance to go make history and do something that everyone said was really hard and couldn't be done. Well, let's go prove people wrong. You know, let's go have a chip on our shoulders and prove that we can. There's no reason we shouldn't win here, frankly. We've got a great situation here. I said, we've got a great city. We've got a great community. We've got scholarships. We've got more than half the teams in the conference. We got a, We got a bubble. There's a lot of reasons I can point why we should win here. Mm -hmm. uh, we just got to get everyone in, in, in alignment and going in the right direction. Perfect. I'm really excited to hear that. And my last question is just what is your message going forward to anyone who may doubt you, this new staff, and just this team as a whole? Well, you know, there's there's, there's always going to be cynics and doubters and non-believers. There is, I mean, there's people that don't <laughs> cynics and doubters and believers that don't believe in the in LeBron. You know, so. I can't worry about those people. I'm not going to worry about them. I, I think if you do things right, you treat people right, you give you give it an honest effort, um, then it all takes care of itself. And then some people that might be on the fence, we can get them, you know, get them back on the bandwagon. I'll tell some of those people that are on the fence right now, you know, start getting your ankles taped up because I don't want you to sprain it when you're jumping on the bandwagon when we get this thing turned around. Love it. Some of these phrases you, you use, and I love them. Love them. And then, okay, so just – I'm out of my questions, but just if there's if people want to find you, whether that's recruits, people in the community, people at Minot State, if they want to find you, where can they find you at? Well, the easiest place to find all of us coaches right now is on Twitter. Not 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 everyone's in the Twitterverse. I understand that, but that's where recruiting takes place. That's you know this younger generation, the guys you know your age, Parker, or even younger in high school, right? They're they're on their phones, you know eight, nine, ten hours a day. That's where they're living, and that's where we have to go meet them. That's a fertile recruiting ground, you know. That's For better or worse, that's that's just the way it is. You know, now, I'm not a big TikTok guy. I don't go down that road, okay? But Twitter, you know, only old people are on Facebook, too, by the way. So <laughs> old people are on Facebook. Instagram's a little bit of everything, and then, you know, but Twitter's where the recruiting happens. So that's the easiest place to find all of us because we all got our names out there and our handles and our little sticks we're going through but it's fun actually the recruiting part of it's fun um and then obviously you know we'll we'll be out there for spring practice and training camp and we'll be in the community uh, so we'll be we'll be actively engaged in, in every area perfect you guys here heard it here first if you want to reach any of the minot state coaches make sure you go to twitter and they'll find you once you reach you got to reach out to them first though then they're not going to come for you but unless they're really fast and have eligibility left, you know, then then we might go find them. Th then they will search for you. Well, that is all I have for you guys today. Once again, this is head coach Ian Shields, head coach for the Minot State football team. Spring practice starts in 15 days, and be sure to look out for them this fall with a new revamped focus and motivation for this Beavers team. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. Thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you all next time. Peace. Thank you.